Did you know there's a highway that cost over a billion dollars? But people say it's cursed and refuse to drive on it. Or a man-made island paradise that now looks more like a broken dream, slowly sinking into the sea. Some mega projects are built to inspire awe, but end up leaving behind nothing but questions, debt, and empty shells of ambition. Today on Construction Wars, we're diving into five of the world's most useless mega projects, from a futuristic smart city that barely anyone lives in, to a towering skyscraper that touches the clouds but has never welcomed a single resident. And just wait till you see the capital city that was built in total secrecy, complete with 20-lane highways, yet almost nobody lives there. You will be thinking, why were these projects built? Who was behind them? And most importantly, why did they fail so spectacularly? Before we get started, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Construction Wars because 95% of you watching our videos are not subscribing to our channel and let us know in the comments which one you think is the most mind-blowingly useless mega project. Number 5. Interstate H3, Hawaii Let's kick off in Hawaii with a highway so picturesque, drivers might pull over just to stare if they dared. The 26-kilometer Interstate H3 cuts through emerald valleys and misty mountains, so stunning that officials once worried motorists would slam their brakes, triggering chaos on the road. But this road to paradise has a darker story. First pitched in 1960 as a military lifeline connecting Pearl Harbor on Oahu's south shore to the Marine Corps Air Station on the east coast, H3 hit an immediate wall of opposition. Native Hawaiian communities and environmental groups decried the plan, warning it would slice through sacred valleys and fragile ecosystems. Decades of reroutes and new environmental protections ground the project to a halt. It wasn't until 1986 that Congress stripped away those legal barriers, and in 1989, shovels finally hit the dirt. By the time H3 opened in December 1997, 37 years after its proposal, the landscape had changed. GPS and modern communications had eclipsed the original defense rationale, but every bold decision piled on cost. A once modest $300 million estimate exploded to $1.3 billion, around $50 million per kilometer, the priciest highway build on Earth. And for what? Today, the defense urgency feels outdated. H3 offers no direct route into downtown Honolulu, and many native Hawaiians avoid it entirely, believing it cursed after bulldozers obliterated centuries-old cultural sites. So is Interstate H3 a monument to human ingenuity or a monument to excess. Stay tuned as we move from Hawaii's hidden highway to a skyscraper that never welcomed a single soul. Number four, Golden Finance 117 Tianjin. Imagine a skyscraper so tall, 600 meters high, that it would have ranked among the world's giants. Yet today, this concrete colossus stands silent, never welcoming a single tenant. Meet Golden Finance 117, proudly holding the title of the world's tallest unoccupied building. Back in the early 2000s, China cities raced to showcase their wealth with jaw-dropping architecture. Billionaire Pat Sutong of Golden Financial Holdings dreamed up a new luxury district just outside downtown Tianjin, Golden Metropolitan. At its heart would tower the 128-story Golden Finance 117 to 117 floors of lavish residential and office space, capped by a three-story diamond-shaped sky deck at 580 meters, complete with an observation deck, pool, and restaurant. Construction kicked off in 2008, with sites set on a 2014 grand opening. But when the 2008 financial crisis sent shockwaves through global markets, Sutong diverted funds to stabilize his other investments, and the cranes fell silent. Work briefly resumed in 2011, pushing completion to 2018. By September 2015, the structure was finally topped out, a moment that should have been triumphant. Instead, China's stock market crash that June had wiped out $13 billion of Sutong's fortune and slashed Golden's share price by 67%. Three months later, construction was paused indefinitely. Yet financial turmoil alone doesn't tell the whole story. From the start, Golden Finance 117 was aimed squarely at the ultra-wealthy, promising sky-high luxury beyond the reach of Tianjin's residents. 
Would Chinese elites really abandon Beijing or Shanghai for an unfinished tower in Tianjin? The market for such opulence simply didn't exist. Now the site is abandoned, workers and machinery gone, the building left to the elements. Day after day, Golden Finance 117 looms over Tianjin as a silent reminder. Even the grandest dreams can falter when ambition outpaces reality. Number 3. Naipia Dao, Myanmar. Imagine a brand new capital city rising overnight. 20 lane highways, gleaming hotels, and sprawling golf courses, all built in secret. Welcome to Naipia Dao, Myanmar's ultra modern king's residence. Conceived behind closed doors in 2002 by the country's military rulers, Napier Dao was unveiled to the public in November 2005, but even its name remained a mystery for four more months. Why move a capital? Officially, Yangon was bursting at the seams, home to over 7 million people. Its roads and infrastructure groaned under the pressure, with forecasts predicting the population would double by 2050. Strategically, some say the generals feared a naval attack on the coastal city. Others whisper it was astrologers' advice. Whatever the real reason, by 2006, Myanmar had already poured some $4 billion into crafting this futuristic metropolis. On paper, it had everything. An airport with a 3.5 million passenger capacity, over 100 luxury hotels split across three districts, museums, parks, and even a 99-meter replica of Yangon's iconic landmark. But as you drive along those empty 20-lane boulevards, spotting not a soul for miles, you realize something vital is missing. People? Today, fewer than 1 million residents live in Napier Dao, and most settled in villages that predated the capital's rise. Hospitals lack specialists, schools offer limited programs, and job opportunities are scarce. So why would anyone uproot from Yangon or Mandalay? As a result, the city feels eerily deserted. On a busy day, the airport sees only a dozen passengers. Traffic jams are unheard of, yet you might spot a solitary car drifting across those vast highways. Malls echo with emptiness, save for diplomatic staff on weekends, and hotel lobbies stand ghostly silent. For now, though, Napada remains one of the world's strangest capitals, a monumental gamble that for much of Myanmar's people still feels utterly useless. Up next, we'll head to a city built to reclaim the sea, but is it sinking before it even rises? Number 2. Echo Atlantic, Nigeria Now we head to the coast of Lagos, where an entire city has been carved out of the Atlantic Ocean. Meet the Echo Atlantic City. After centuries of shoreline erosion, Nigeria's government launched an audacious plan in 2003. Reclaim the sand washed away by the tides, pile it up, and build a brand new metropolis atop it. Instead of sinking like Atlantis, this city would rise dramatically from the waves. By 2016, engineers had achieved the Great Wall of Lagos, an imposing seawall that shields the artificial peninsula from storms and surging currents. The foundation is solid, and a handful of sleek residential towers have sprung up. But for the most part, Echo Atlantic remains a vast, empty canvas. Miles of sandy streets etched into the ground, waiting for the skyscrapers and homes that were supposed to stand there by now. And it's not just an unfinished skyline. This project has stirred controversy, blocking the ocean's natural flow, disrupted local marine life, and altered currents. In 2012, a violent swell devastated a nearby island's beaches, tragically killing several people, an event experts linked to the seawall's interference. Meanwhile, those few residents lucky enough to move in live a surreal existence. They gaze out on deserted sands and half-built roads, ghosts of grand boulevards yet to materialize. What was meant to house a quarter million people now hosts only cranes and construction crews. Despite massive delays, work continues. New towers are slowly rising, and the dream of a thriving luxury city still drives investors forward. But until the skyline fills in, Echo Atlantic stands as a cautionary tale, an engineering marvel of land reclamation, transformed into an expensive expanse of nothing but sand. But what about our final mega project? Number one, the World Islands, Dubai. Just when you thought Dubai's Palm Jumeirah was jaw-dropping, along came an even wilder idea. 
a miniature globe floating offshore. Since 2003, developers have been carving out 300 sand-piled islets, each one shaped like a country or famous landmark, France, New York, Mount Everest, all ringed by a colossal wave breaker to tame the Arabian Gulf's tides. Billions of dollars and millions of cubic meters of dredged sand later, the islands stood ready. Dubai immediately began selling prime parcels to luxury hotel chains and ultra-wealthy investors. Blueprints promised ski slopes in Alps, beachfront villas in Montserrat, and wellness retreats in Siberia. Within months, most plots had new owners, yet none of these epic plans ever materialized. Today, the world islands are mostly silent sandbanks. You'll spot a beach club on Lebanon and a boutique shopping mall on North America, plus some construction hushed underway in Antarctica and Europe. But for the most part, these islands are empty outlines on the water, waiting for infrastructure that never arrived. Original plans called for a network of underwater cables and pipelines to supply power, water, and sewage. But laying those connections proved vastly more complex and costly than anticipated. Residents who dared move in rely on noisy diesel generators and daily water deliveries by barge. A promised causeway to the mainland remains just a line on a map. No roads, no utilities, no hotels, just sand. And the world isn't its only desert island project. In 2005, Dubai began four more artificial isles, then ran out of cash, washing away a quarter of the reclaimed land before pausing. Revival efforts started in 2022, but so far those two stand barren. Even the lesser-known Palm Jebel Ali archipelago, complete, sits ghostly and undeveloped. Imagine owning your own country, literally built to your specs, only to find nothing but dust and empty roads. If you had an entire island to call your own, what would you build? A private palace? An eco-resort? Or would you too let your grand vision slip beneath the waves? Tell us in comment section. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notification. I'll see you in the next epic update on projects that are rewriting the rules of construction. Thanks for watching.